Bet you guys weren't expecting this, were you? Fuck you guys. <laughs> well, actually, I don't know if I was picturing this either. <coughs> All right. It's the UFC's worst nightmare. Oh, man. You know, fucking, you know, Hunter and Dana were like, fuck this. <laughs> Sean, first of all, congratulations on being the world champion. Um, did that fight play out how you thought it was going to? Was the game plan just put him on the back foot, pressure him, pressure him? You know, I thought I was going to be leaving with a concussion, but I feel relatively fine other than a few, you know, bumps and bruises. Yeah, no, I mean, the game plan, well, the game plan was a wrestle, you guys. We did all camp, we wrestled all camp, but, you know, when you're a little autistic, you just kind of do what you do. <laughs> do you... Lots of people are saying that Israel himself looks kind of off tonight. Do you think he was off, or do you think you made him look off by your style? You know, I think I'm one of the best strikers in the world. Anytime, anytime you're doing the man dance, you know, you're one punch away from being knocked out. But I could spar with any world champion boxer and get the better of him. So, I don't know, man. I just think, I just think I'm one of the best strikers in the world. You, uh, you nearly had him out of there. Yeah, well, let me just say this. Like, you know, I watched him fight Kelvin, and he was like, Oh, you don't you don't have a chin like Kelvin. You might have his cardio, but I'm like chin like Kelvin, motherfucker. Like last time I sparred Kelvin, the coach jumped in and made a stop. Like, like you have no fucking idea. Like, like I've seen the guys you beat, and you should see me spar the guys you beat, motherfucker. Like, no idea. So it was just kind of like, I just think sometimes I run my mouth so much that people forget that I know how to fight. Is that something you're gonna change? No, no, <laughs> fuck you guys. No, fuck. Fucking got dick, dick ring over there, man. Like, <laughs> never stopping, man. Never stopping. Did, uh, did you think the referee was going to stop it when you were, you were teeing off on him? No, you know, like, whenever he came to, I, there was a moment where I thought he was going to, but once he stood up and he came to, he wasn't ready. You know, here's the thing, guys. I don't hit that fucking hard. You know, we all know that. I don't hit that hard. So if I'm going to knock somebody out, you know, they got to they gotta be ready. You, uh, Dana says that they'd like to do the rematch. Um, is that something you're open to? I mean, you're, there's a the thing, you guys. <clears throat> well, I've learned anything about the UFC since when do you have a fucking choice of who you fight? The UFC never comes up to you and says, hey, Sean, would you like to fight this guy? Or would you like to fight this guy? The UFC says, hey, you're fighting this guy, fight this guy. So, at the end of the day, I'm the champion. So, fucking line him up. I'll knock him down or get knocked down. Uh, how do you rate your own performance, right? Do you think, because look, the game plan was to wrestle. You didn't. You had that in the back pocket that you could have gone to if you wanted to. So that means if in the rematch, do you think you just do the same thing again? Or is it you're going to prove that actually I can beat Israel in any way? I mean, you know, I would like to wrestle one fight just so people know I can wrestle. Because I keep telling these fucking guys I can wrestle, but I never do it. So maybe one fight I'll wrestle just so people are like, oh, yeah, Sean can wrestle. He does know what a takedown is. So maybe one day. How does it feel to be the world champion? I mean, you said yourself in the cage that you hadn't having doubts when you were on your way out there, and I'm sure you, there are probably times in your career you never thought this was going to happen, right? So yeah, to be sitting up there with that belt, tell me about it. I mean, I'm pretty much over it now, you guys. It was exciting for like a you know a month, a minute, but now it's just on and there. And then, day guys, here's the thing, guys. Say say me and Izzy fight again, and say 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 the China man clips me, and then Izzy's sitting here and he's saying, "How does it feel to be a world champion?" You know, as is acrylic fucking nail. So like. A lot of this is bullshit. I like to fucking fight. I like the fans. I love my job, but a lot of this is fucking bullshit. So you're not going to be wearing that out to the club or anything? No, no. I'm going to go probably get some room service and wait to get the fuck home. Congratulations. No, th hey, by the way, bro, we've been riding this. What, what is your name? I don't fucking know your name. <laughs> Oscar. Oscar. Me, Oscar's been with me since fucking day one, bro, at the fucking Apex. Always in every me. Let's go, Oscar. Thanks, buddy. Congrats. Uh, thank you for the lovely Twitter. Ah, oh, dick Twitter ring mentions. guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My uh, Twitter mentions are just lovely right now after that media day. Oh, man. Well, fucking hey, man. I, I, didn't, hey, I didn't shove the needle through your dick. <laughs> um, kind of going off the apex thing, could you ever go back to fighting in front of no one now after what we experienced out here with oh, all these fans? You guys, I just like to fight, man. You guys understand, I don't fight because I fight because it allows me to train. So this is, all this does is finance my hobby. So this is the only reason why I fight is because I have a hobby of training, and this is, allows me to do it. And you, you've obviously been one of, if not the most active middleweights over the last several years, but as champion, you might have to kind of pull back yeah. from the amount of fights you have in a short amount of time. Well, I'm going to be making more money now, you guys. I'm fucking my high accent. I'm going to put some spinners on that motherfucker. 
I'm going to have a $16,000 Hyundai Accent with like a $20,000 spinning rims. I'm going to lift that mullet. It's going to be great. Fucking great. Well, kind of going off of that, what in your life is going to change now as, like, in your regular life? Fucking nothing, man. You know, I don't even have a fucking GED, you guys. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, I could barely fucking write, you know. You'd give me a pen and paper, tell me to write some shit, and I can't even fucking... Come on. I'm not, I'm not an asshole, man. Like... Here's what, here's what they do. They put a camera in our faces, and they make us feel like a pretty little whore, and they make us feel special, but, like, I'm a fucking fighter, bro. I take my money off, and I try to fucking kill a man for 25 minutes. Like, come on. And final one for me. Uh, Israel came over and was saying some stuff to you at, right after they wrapped the belt around you. Do you remember what he oh, told you? Oh, it was you? fucking strange, you guys. It was fucking strange. He was, like, talking. I think he was mad that I made from his dog. I'm not even joking. Is that what it was? He was mad that I made from his dog. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here, man? Like... Are we, like, are we having this conversation? Like, yeah, truly was mad. Yeah, I don't fucking know. Izzy, I'm sorry I made fun of your dog. I'm sure he's a, a great fella. I think it was this dog that's passed away that's tattooed on his neck. Oh, is that what it he is? He said in an interview he was going to go John Wick on you. Oh, man, you know, I have killed a dog once. Crazy sore, right? Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah, you, yeah. Do you yeah. want to clarify anything about that? Because I think no, some people no, are No, no, man, bit. no. Yeah, like, I have a weird past, you guys. Weird past. Yeah, uh, <laughs> think about it. <laughs> it seemed like in the first round, yeah. uh, you checked a kick that seemed to really get to him. I think you did a good job uh, having a good poker face, but did you notice that at all? It seemed like you checked a kick really well, and that seemed to bother him for maybe no, the No, man, the I wasn't even thinking about it. We're just going in there fucking fighting, doing the thing, man. Yeah. You know, like, here's the thing. For 25 minutes, you just got to tell yourself, I'm ready to die in this motherfucker. You know, I'm ready to die in this motherfucker. And, like, if you start looking at a guy's face when he's hurt, when he's not hurt, like, I don't care a fuck about that. Yeah. Um, was the defending the leg kicks, though, a big part of the strategy, something that you knew you would have to do a lot in there because he was kicking a lot? You know, I'm going to clarify that statement because I'm going to get my Instagram flooded. I was hiking once. I was hiking once. I had a bunch of dogs off a leash with all my, my, little, my little fucking rascals running around. And there was, like, these fucking stray dogs who were, like, vicious fucking pit bulls. And they came run at my dog. And I had a gun. Fucking boom, plugged one. So, you know, the clarify, it was self-defense. But anyways, yeah. But in the end of the day, it's a fucking dog, Izzy. Calm the fuck down, dude. Oh, fuck. No, Izzy, I'm sorry. I'm sure your dog's a great fellow. <laughs> this is how it starts, you guys. You, you fucking do this to me, Canada. Calm the fuck down. Yeah, you didn't even fucking dress up, dude. Cockbroom's wearing a fucking suit, and you're fucking, <laughs> and you're fucking looking like you just woke up. So this is the similar shirt that we did in the interview the other day. I thought it was good luck for you. Yeah, guys. I'm tired, man. I'm fucking tired, guys. I'm ready to go to bed. I'm tired. A lot of energy today. Yeah. What do you think Israel will say going into the next fight? Because he came in here, but he didn't talk anything about it. He just said, my coach is going to do my post-fight interview for me, and he left in Eugene. Guys, answered all the questions. I don't fucking know. Like, you win some, you lose some, just man the fuck up. You know, you win some, you lose some, man the fuck up. Like, you know, there's a chance I fight somebody else and I'm fucking in the back room, bloody, fucked up. You just, it's fucking fighting you guys. Like, any given fucking Sunday, man, we're throwing four rounds gloves really fucking hard. Yeah. Would you, just have a hit if it, oh, just one more. Um, if it is someone else and for some reason the timing doesn't work out for Izzy or something like that, do you think it should be Jared or Drickus? I don't care, man. Don't give a fuck. Whoever the UFC wants. Congrats, man. Uh, Sean, just over here. Hey, no uh, more dog questions, you guys. <laughs> fuck, it's getting awkward in here. Oh. Uh, I mentioned to you on the, uh, at the press conference um, on Thursday about you know, the whole UFC card number being 93 and you know, 193, Holly Holm shocking the world. And here we are sitting with you at UFC 293 after you shocking the world. I just want to get your thoughts and, and sort of what goes through your mind knowing that you pr proved a lot of people wrong tonight. Oh, fuck, I think I might prove myself wrong, you know? <laughs> you fuck, man. You watch Izzy go and fuck everybody up, and you walk through them pretty easily. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's just a weird day, guys. Weird fucking day. Weird day. And, Here we uh, are. Just uh, one more is, you know, you spoke a lot about the Australian fans um, this week, you know, sort of cheering you on. How, how much of a, an impact did that have for you during the fight itself? Oh, yeah, man, walking out, all the fucking love, you know, even the fourth round, fifth round cheering. But at the end of the day, man, Izzy made it easy. easy. Like, he fucking walked out the, with Chinese shorts on. Like, how the fuck, like, how the fuck, I know he's not Australian, but, like, how the fuck does that happen? Like, I mean, I'm asking you guys, like, why did he have Chinese shorts on? I'm asking you guys. Like, at the end of the day, man, this is a problem in this fucking world. All Izzy had to do, all Izzy had to do was said, hey, you guys, Australia, New Zealand. I'm sure, I'm sure Izzy spent a lot of time in Australia. Where does Izzy live? Does he live in New Zealand or Australia? New Zealand. All Izzy had to do, you know, 
Guys, I am an immigrant to New Zealand. I'm an immigrant to this part of the world. And you guys welcomed me as one of your own. And you guys gave me a great life. And I want to thank everybody for that and give me this opportunity. But he fucking didn't. He fucking didn't. He said, I am fucking Chinese. Like, I don't fucking know, guys. I mean, what does one say to this? What does one say to this? I mean, you guys are Australian. What the fuck? Or New Zealand. Hey, Sean. Um, you got very animated there in the last minute of the fight. What were you um, saying to Izzy in the ring? I just, I think I was calling him the China man. I said, come on, China man, let's fight. You know, that's what he is, right? The China man. And here's the thing, guys. Izzy's a fucking legend, and I don't like to make fun of him because he is a fucking legend. But, I mean, he fucking came out with, like, the Chinese colors, dude. The fucking Chinese colors, man. Like, you, like what the fuck are you thinking? And I mean, no, I'm, a, I'm asking you guys, like, I'm, a, I'm asking you guys, what is the logic coming out, like, to fucking the CCP communist fucking party, bro? Like, does he want to go, like, is he, like, motherfucker, dude? Even now, talking about it, I can't even wrap my head around that fucking spineless shit. Sean, just also wanted to get your thoughts on sharing the moment with uh, Eric and the team. You was talking about how much work went into this camp, obviously, and Extreme Couture. Just want to shine some light on what that meant for you to share that moment just before with them. Yeah, I know. I mean, Eric is a fucking leader, man. You know, he, he always motivates me between rounds. He's always fucking pushing me in the gym. He's always fucking, I'm always working my fucking ass off. He's always giving me the hardest rounds. Like, I, I have a great team. I have a fucking great team, and I would not be here without my team. Even Alex Zarate, man, I've been with him since I was fucking 14 years old, you know? So, yeah, I just have a fucking solid fucking team. Everybody at Extreme is amazing. And Sean, just one over here. You said that one of the first times you were truly happy in your life was when you won your first fight. Does this moment now winning the belt rank as one of the happiest in your life? I mean, it was pretty good. I'm kind of over it now. <laughs> I mean, that day, like, what do we do, you know? The past is the past. Move the fuck on, right? What now? I'm going to go back, back to training. Everyone's going to congratulate me. I'll say, thank you, guys, and then we just move the fuck on. I mean, this shit doesn't make me happy. Sure. I actually don't know what does make me happy at times. <laughs> Sean, sure, just down here, uh, I know just... I did like watching the blood splatter from his face, so that was kind of nice. That kind of made me a little happy. <laughs> you say just then, you know, you move on, and the next day may not be that different, but there was no hiding it throughout the, the hype up for this fight. Clips of you talking about kind of what growing up for you was like, and your, your life was kind of put a little bit on, on show. To go from everything you've been through to now holding that belt that says you're the baddest man at middleweight yeah. on the planet. But what do you think about that? Yeah. Thank God for child abuse, right? Fuck. Yeah. Let's go childhood traumas and repressed memories. You fucking, you, you really, you got me to where I needed to be, man. Like fucking dad, you, you're fucking awesome, man. All, all of the years of abuse, you really, <laughs> you really made me the man I had to be today. <laughs> I don't fucking know you guys. I'm just happy that this fucking world has a place for us, you know. If it wasn't for this man, I'm sure I would have fucking committed some random act of violence and fucking been locked up for killing somebody. So fucking huzzah the UFC, man. Thank you for fucking saving someone's life, including my own. I was uh, just going to follow up, Sean. Is that kind of what the belt represents? Maybe you don't care about it, but that's, you know, if you're looking at that statement, that seems to be something pretty deep. Yeah, man. It's just kind of weird, dude. Like, here... Like, whenever you talk to normal people, and I know we're not all normal, but whenever you talk to normal people who have, like, a conscience, you know, it's like, you guys are fucking strange, man. I, I can't even relate to most people. So, like, it's amazing that you just, every day I get to go in the gym and try to murder my friends, and all the demons just vanish away for a day. So, I love this fucking sport. Tuesday, you guys, extreme, get ready. I'm going to fucking be my Dr. Phil again. You said earlier, as well as in a, earlier before the fight, you talked about you talk a lot and people forget that you can fight. And you, yeah, you, yeah. you mentioned feeling maybe a little bit underestimated. Do you think Israel underestimated you tonight? Yeah, fuck. I mean, apparently so, man. God damn, dude. I feel like the guy didn't even fucking try. There's moments where he's throwing punches where I'm like, am I fighting an amateur right now? What the fuck is going on? But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think I run my mouth a lot and people forget I could fight, but... Here we are, you guys. You're going to have to talk to me for a little bit longer. Sorry about that. Hey, Sean. Back, right? 
Um, oh, you're a clean cut looking motherfucker, man. Let's go. Thank you. I appreciate I it. I do. I just like that you take your job serious, man. Thank you. You thank take your job way more serious than I take my job. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you very much. And congratulations on the oh, win. Oh, thanks, the man. Uh, your name is going to go down. You in... shouldn't be drinking Coke, though. That's bad for you, man. What are you talking about, bro? You guys are Australia. way skinny here, dude. Uh, your name will go down in the sports history after you pulled off one of the greatest upsets. <laughs> yeah, right. How did this ass ever get a belt? Who the fuck let this happen, man? Hunter and Dana are probably like, this motherfucker. How the fuck did we let this fucking retard get a belt? <laughs> we fucked up. Why did we agree to this? <laughs> so many other options and we let Sean Strickland fight, is he? No. Hey, sorry, guys, man. Um, yeah, so your name will go down uh, along some of the greatest upsets ever. Just how does that make you feel, you know, long after your career is done, that you, your name will always be brought up when people talk about the greatest upsets in UFC history? Oh, man, I don't know, dude. I don't really give a fuck about this sport. Like, <laughs> dang. Do I get to keep this? Do I get to keep a belt? They give me a belt? What do these motherfuckers sell for these days? How does that work? What, does anybody know? <laughs> I'm going to lift my Hyundai. Um, and just a, a what was there a certain point in the fight, maybe towards the fourth or the fifth round, where it, it hit you that you'd, you've won the fight and the only way you could lose from there was being knocked out? Or was it at the end there, that final 20 seconds when this you started fucking, screaming this at fucking you? fucking dog here. I'm, I sure is he wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, he's going to come. He's going to okay, fucking shoot me now. Sean insulted my dog, my best friend. Like, what the fuck, dude? Uh, Stay on point. I'm sorry, bro. I, I love you guys. I have some brain damage. Yeah, yeah. Come teach me how to fucking speak. Yeah, no, man, guys. It was good, man. It was good. He's a good guy. Good fight. You know, I gave 110%. Gave 110%. Went hard in the first, second round. I felt good. Like, the fuck do you guys want from me, man? Uh, just finally, we searched it up over here. A UFC replica belt goes for about $1,700. So. Oh, that's it? Oh, yeah. well, fuck that, dude. I'm going to keep that motherfucker. <laughs> Well, congratulations on the win, anyway. 1700 bucks? Well, fucking A, man. That doesn't make you feel like a cheap whore. Nothing will. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. It's been great.